Today we're checking out another new tablet by Lenovo. This time the Tab P12. This one's just been released in the United States. The nice thing is it has a pen included. Sort of a strange name though. They're calling it the Tab Pen Plus. Now there's a few different versions. I believe pricing starts at $349 for the base model. I paid $379 for the version that has eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage. Weird thing is you've got two models with 128 gigabytes of storage but one has four gigabytes of RAM, the other has eight. You can also expand the storage with a micro SD card. It's got a 12.7 inch IPS LCD display with 1840 by 2944 resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and then a downside to some people, this is only at 60 hertz refresh rate. It's got a MediaTek Dimensity 7050 processor. It's got a quad speaker setup with two JBL speakers on each side. Also has Dolby Atmos. Surprisingly, they include a wall adapter and USB-C to USB-A charging cable. Only 20 watts though. I was thinking this tablet went up to 30 watts. You've also got your quick start guide, safety and warranty information. Also a quick start guide for their Tab Pen Plus. A removal tool and they also include an extra tip for the pen. This pen actually looks very similar to the Precision Pen 3, although this one has a USB-C charging port right there on the side. Looks like you just turn the tip right on, so pretty easy to change there. Definitely feels like a step up from something like the Precision Pen 2. You can see a spot right here on the back. Seems like a pretty strong magnet. And yeah, you can tell this tablet is definitely larger than most of the other Lenovo tablets, but it feels really thin, really lightweight. The one downside I see with this pen, it doesn't look like it charges when it attaches to the back of the tablet. So the only way to charge it is to plug it in with USB-C. On the top, you've got your power and micro SD card tray, volume buttons on the right hand side or the top in landscape mode, USB-C charging port there on the bottom. And as you can see, you've got your two speakers on each side. It doesn't look like the pen snaps to the side of the tablet like you've got on Samsung, unless you do it near the Pogo pens. When you're setting up, you've got the option of password, fingerprint, and face unlock as well. I didn't even realize the fingerprint scanner is on the power button because the power button sticks out just like any other power button. Pretty simple to set up though. Looks like it's on gesture navigation by default, but then you have virtual navigation, which is just three button navigation. Okay, the screen on here actually looks pretty nice. The wallpaper definitely reminds me of the Galaxy Tab S7 series. Now the software on here is Android 13, but it definitely looks updated from some of the other Lenovo tablets. And now up here definitely looks a little different, almost like an iPad or Xiaomi with your notifications over here, then your shortcuts, volume and brightness slider over here. It looks like we've got a software update here as well, so might as well do that. Now, as far as software goes, this is currently on Android 13, but they're saying it's gonna get Android 14 and 15, plus four years of security updates until 2027. You'll notice the pen doesn't work right out of the box, so you do have to go into the Bluetooth settings and connect it through there. You'll also notice when you plug it in, there's a red light there on the tip. Shows it's currently at 85%, so we should be good for a while. And then of course, the features are gonna be somewhat similar to Samsung tablets, where you can write something and it turns to text. You can also use the button on here to control the tablet as well for music, videos, or to take photos. Then you've got things like pop-up notes, quick notes, handwriting to text smart shape, and switching between paint and eraser by double tapping the stylus button. It looks like the shortcuts over here are a little bit different than before. I kind of like this new look they're doing. Definitely looks more modern, but it looks like you've got remote control when using the camera, videos, or in a slideshow. You've also got your magnifying glass. Sort of a laser pen there as well. They've also got their own little notepad app here, which you can move around to wherever. You can also make it full screen, floating window, or split screen as well. Screenshot selection tool. Then you can also bring up the camera app as well. I also tried the Precision Pen 3 just to see if it would connect to this. And yeah, I couldn't figure out a way to connect it. It doesn't seem to want to connect through Bluetooth or when connecting it to the back of the tablet. Left of the home screen, you've got the Google Entertainment Space where you've got a lot of different options for stuff to watch, games to play, books to read, or stuff to listen to. 
Just for a quick size comparison, here it is next to the P11 Pro Gen 2. So it's quite a bit larger than that. And then it's close in size to the Tab S9 FE Plus, but it is just a little bit bigger or taller, depending on how you're holding the tablet. You'll also notice you have a dock down here at the bottom. Apparently you can only have six apps down here in the dock though. Not really sure why other than when you turn the tablet, maybe they don't want that to be a million apps going across. Good thing is, looks like most of the apps on here are just the ones from Google and then just a couple from Lenovo. Up here you have several shortcuts. You'll notice it's sort of simplified without any text. Until you swipe down again, then you can see what each one is called. You've got screenshot, airplane mode, silent, location, auto rotate, do not disturb, screen recorder, split screen, device controls, global video beauty, video portrait, battery saver reading mode, background sounds, mic access, camera, nearby share, auto adjust brightness, nightlight, freestyle, and scan QR code. Plus they have other ones you can add by hitting the little pencil, such as power, camera, flashlight, extra dim, Dolby Atmos, and so on. So overall, I like what they've done so far. Definitely makes things look a little more modern than on some of their previous tablets. You'll also notice you have a taskbar down there at the bottom. Now the weird thing is it doesn't look like you can do a split screen with YouTube anymore. When you tap on the icon, it doesn't give you the split screen option. And when it says to select an app, YouTube's not in there, but you do have YouTube Kids. Good thing is this is Widevine L1 for apps like Netflix, and you can watch YouTube videos at upscaled 4K resolution. And to me, the screen quality on here, I feel like is gonna surprise some people once you see this in person. Also has a 10,200 milliamp hour battery with up to 30 watt fast charging. Now one downside to this tablet is going to be the battery life. I was kind of surprised to see it only lasted about five hours in my battery drain test. I mean that is usually what most iPads last, but typically those have a little brighter display versus this tablet. So yeah, it's definitely below average for battery life. I'm not sure if it's because of the processor, but hopefully that gets a little more efficient as time goes on. Or maybe there was something going on that I don't know about. I'll probably run the test again just to make sure. Now performance wise, as far as Geekbench scores, it was 966 for single core, 2428 for multi-core, and then 2395 for GPU score. I don't think it's too far off from what I was expecting. Probably somewhat comparable to the Galaxy Tab S9 FE, but just playing games like Asphalt 9 and PUBG Mobile New State, it actually seemed to be pretty smooth. I think most people will enjoy playing games on here, even though this doesn't have flagship specs or is considered a gaming tablet. The good thing is having two speakers on each side plus Dolby Atmos. This tablet sounds really good, whether you're watching movies, playing games, or listening to some music. But yeah, these are nice and loud. You've got an 8 megapixel wide angle lens there on the back, 13 megapixel ultra wide on the front. As far as the camera app goes, you've got AI scan, camera, video, central portrait. It'll shoot up to 1080p resolution for video recording. Shutter speed seems to be fairly quick here in my studio lighting. It slows down quite a bit on 2x zoom. Here's a few quick samples of photo and video just to give you an idea of what to expect on the new Tab P12. So hopefully this gave you a little closer look at this new larger sort of mid-range tablet from Lenovo. I plan on comparing this to a few other tablets that I've got. Plus I've got so many tablet comparisons I'm working on right now. This might be the busiest I've ever been as far as new tablets and devices being released in a similar time frame. So keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishby Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.